All right. Uh, sure. Yes. Once I'm recording. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, this recording is on. Yes, sir. I just. Yeah, just. Okay. All right. Okay, uh, when you uh, unzip the folder, the pneumatic folder that I shared with you, you go in there and uh, go to the bin and just open this application, Fluid Sim Pneumatic. This is the correct version, okay? So uh, on some PCs, there may be a problem in opening it. Uh, I hope there is uh, no problem. Uh, I hope so but there can be some problem, okay? Because it's a correct version, anything can happen. So you just open it up and uh, something like this will open. Okay, this software will open uh, once you open that exe file. Just create a new file. So this is the environment where you, where you will be working on. Okay, so in here, basically, what you can do, uh, your experiment was to uh, control a single acting cylinder, right? So this single acting cylinder needs to be controlled using a five by two monostable directional control valve. <coughs> now, what is a monostable control valve? Basically for a monostable control valve, uh, we use uh, on one side there is a, a, a solenoid, but on the other side, the return is basically automatic. So on the right hand side, there is a spring over there. Uh, okay, so this is actually a monostable. Uh, why we call it monostable? Because there is one stable state only. Okay, there is uh, other type of uh, uh, stable valves as well. Like uh, this one is monostable, the other one is bistable. So when we come to it, I will show you how we work on it. Okay, so the following experiment investigates the control of a single lighting cylinder spring operated return. The machinery is turned on using switch S1. So we will define a switch S1. The cylinder should extend when button S3 is pressed. OK, so we will actually include a switch S3 on which uh, which will be interconnected with the solenoid. And on pressing S3, the cylinder will come outside. OK, and when the button is released, it should return to its rest position. All right. Since uh, a three by two directional control valve is not provided. A uh, monostable, okay, we, we just leave it. A monostable five by two control valve is used for the control system. Okay, so in here, what we want is a single acting cylinder, right? So this is your single acting cylinder. Maybe I can zoom it. So you can see it better. And uh, with it, we are supposed to involve a valve that is a five by two valve, right? So we have this five by two valve here. Okay. So as you can see, this is the same valve, I guess, right? So we just attach it. it is right and uh, so this is the compressor air supply we can it cannot connect over here sorry need to connect it over here. OK. And I think that's it. 
we just try to run it. There is an error, there is an open connection. So this is actually a five by two wall. That's why we have a problem over here. Uh, we have open connection. So instead of this one, we will be actually using three by two walls. OK. So. That would be much easier. Uh, let me see if we have uh, some kind of a stopper or no. We don't have it. Maybe I can connect it over here. No. Okay. okay. We don't have it. So instead of using this one, we're using three by two. Okay. The reason is we have an open port there. So we cannot have an open port with a wall. So if you have an open port in the with the wall, what happens that if the air is being releasing from the wall, then you know the pressure will be decreased from the air tank. So it's a waste of energy. This is the reason I'm changing the valve over here. So basically now this is the three by two valve. So how we are going to operate it? This is the solenoid on the left hand side. On the right hand side we have a spring, right? So we just play it. Uh, let me change the regulation speed. Uh, I'm not sure from where we can do the speed regulation. Okay, there is one setting from where we can actually set the timing parameter as well. Maybe if you decrease the flow rate, it will go easier. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to do that. Yep. OK, now you can see it's returning very slow. OK. So. Now you can see how it is working. Sir. <coughs> yeah. Nothing is visible. I can't see anything. Uh, why? I don't know. It's only your name. Only my name. Uh, yeah, I, 
I don't others, see you. Others, Ahmed, and others, other guys. Can can you see the screen? No, I can't see it. Yes, sir. I you can't see. see. Okay. Uh, let me share it again. Let me share it again. So maybe it's my problem, but I don't know what's the problem. Okay, let me share it again. So, okay, let's see. Now? Sir, now is good. Yeah, I can see. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. No problem, no problem. Okay, so uh, I will just repeat again. Uh, so this is a single actuating cylinder and uh, it has a spring inside it. So basically we have a one port over here. Okay, so in normal condition, this setting will be applied because it is being uh, forced uh, by this spring. Okay, there is a spring with this valve as well. This is a three by two valve. Okay. So any air trapped inside the cylinder is going through this vent outside from here in port number three. Right. And uh, once we turn on this solenoid, we provide current to this solenoid. Now the current is being passed. Oh, sorry, the air is being passed from port number one to two and inside the cylinder. And you can see the cylinder has now pushed back uh, outside. OK. And uh, once we switch off this solenoid, because of this spring, uh, now the cylinder will be returned. OK. Now it will come very slow. Because we have changed the flow rate, that's why. OK. So this is the basic experiment. Uh, now let me show you how we will be developing the control diagram. This is basically the pneumatic diagram. OK, so in every experiment that we do, we have a pneumatic diagram and an electrical control diagram as well. So. For electrical control diagram, let me switch back the screen again. For the electrical control diagram uh, for this experiment. This is experiment one for the pneumatic, okay, electro pneumatic. So we are discussing about the control diagram. Or we can say that there's an electrical diagram. OK, so. What we were supposed to do over here, we were supposed to do that uh, the machine is turned on using S1. So we have a point over here that machine. Turns on. When. S1 is pressed. Okay. And uh, then we have another switch uh, when S3 is pressed. When S3 is pressed, what will happen? The cylinder will extend. Let's 
cylinder extends and uh, when S3 is released, the cylinder, it will uh, return to its rest position. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. So as you already remember that uh, we, for electrical control diagram, there are two lines. One is plus 24 volt line. The other one is zero volt line, right? So in between these two, we will develop our program. Uh, sorry, we will design our circuit, okay? So here we have S1 and uh, right. Okay, once S1 is pressed, the machine will open. So anything uh, we are going to make in this circuit diagram has to be after S1, okay? So once S3 is pressed, This is your valve. Q1. And uh, this is your S3. Okay. So that's it, basically. What will happen once I press S1? Uh, then the machine will turn on. Now, the, now if I press S3, the Q1 will operate. Q1 is basically the solenoid, okay? So if this was our diagram, right? We had a piston here. There was a port here, and it was connected to a three by two. I'm sorry, not like this. A three by two control mode. Right. And uh, so like this over here. Here we have a solenoid, right? And this is actually Q1. And uh, we have a return over here. Return is automatic, automatic due to the spring. Okay. This is connected over here. Understood? So what will happen if S1 is uh, not pressed and I press S3, nothing will happen. Q1 will not operate. So we can only operate Q1 after S1 is pressed. Okay. So once S1 is pressed and S3 is pressed, only then the Q1 will operate. What will happen if Q1 is operated? This setting will be applied and uh, the cylinder will extend right and uh, once we release s3 once we release this button s3 what will happen uh, this setting will be applied the rest uh, rest setting because of this spring okay because of this spring the ball will change its position to the rest position and any air trapped over here will go outside from here. Okay, so this is what will happen. So let us uh, develop this electrical diagram as well and uh, try to control this pneumatic diagram. Okay, so this is what we are going to do now. Okay, 
we come back to our fluid sim software okay in the options <coughs> you will find uh, solenite valve okay you need two switches uh, two moment free switches right so this is one this is second one all right so let me zoom out a little bit We have a 24 volt line here and uh, we have a ground line over here. OK, so. Let me rotate it. And this is our S1. We connect our S1 to S3. And this is our valve. Okay. okay, one thing make sure that uh, any output like this wall over here needs to be connected to the ground. Okay, so you need to make sure this. So this is our S1, we will label it. This is S3. And this is Q1. OK, and here. I can label this one. Q1. Okay, what I did over here, uh, instead of uh, manual control, I'm using a pneumatically or electrically controlled solenoid. I'm using that on the left hand side. Okay, on the right hand side, we have a spring, and uh, you can still change it. Okay, you can change these, change this with these options if you want to. Okay, let's try to run it. So I press S1. Okay, this is a momentary switch. Uh, so I have to uh, keep the tab on over here. So let me change the switch. I want this one to be momentary latching switch. Now I name it as one. So once I turn it on, it will keep its position. Now it latches over there. Now once I press S3, as you can see, once the Q1 is operated, Q1 is basically the solenoid valve. Once it is operated, uh, the valve switches its position, and once I release it. Now the air trapped over here will go outside. OK, and the uh, piston will come to its rest position. It will retract back to its rest position. OK, so I hope you understood it. Is there any question right now? Anything? So it's easy, but we only have to know the Functions of the simple. So. It's simple, right? So, uh, yeah, okay. Now, what I want from you is to implement this on your screens. Okay. 
Is it possible? Now or later? I have already shared the software with you guys uh, on Teams. You can download that and uh, open the software and try to run it. OK. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, now? Uh, yes, now. I don't think I, I can download it now. Okay, no problem. Then maybe you can uh, observe other guys because I want them to share their screens as well. If possible. Maybe maybe Ahmed or uh, Taha or Bland, uh, any of you can uh, share your screen with us so others can see what is happening. OK. So let me switch off my screen. If you have any issues uh, while doing this experiment, obviously you can ask me and uh, uh, try to share your screen with us so we can see uh, what is the problem, where is the problem, and how it can be resolved. Okay.
Okay, I think Mohammed has a problem here. Uh, I think you have built it, but you don't know how to make it a start. Okay. <clears throat> right. So should I share my screen? Yeah, you can share your screen. Okay, this one over here basically uh, it is attached to a push button, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, so if you want, you can play it. How can I play it? Okay, uh, there is okay in the oh, here. top bar, yeah, over here. Now just push over here. You need to keep pushing it. Okay. No, good. Now release it. I will come back. Okay, the flow rate is very low. That's why it is coming back very slowly. Okay, that's good. Now just stop it over here. Just stop this one. Just make the simulation stop. Not stop. Now make the electrical system that I developed. Try to connect it with a solenoid. Oh, yes, sir. Sir, the number mm -hmm. three of the valve to where should I connect it? Uh, number three, uh, if you want to leave it, just leave it. OK, it is usually connected to a vent. That vent is basically an exhaust. That exhaust uh, sometimes is used as a return to the tank or it exhausts into the open air. OK, so just leave it there. May, uh, make it open. Sir, I also did the first one. OK, uh, if you want to share a screen, please share a screen with us so we can see. OK, sir, I will join the teams on the computer, then I will share it because okay. I'm on my phone right now. No problem.
that's good should i start it, I start it? yes oh yes you can start it so you need to press yeah okay good, good. that's fine that's fine you can you have to keep keep it pressed okay all right this is very fast now if you want to slow down the rate uh, you just stop the simulation first yeah stop it and double click on the bulb yeah uh, okay from here standard nominal flow rate needs to be very less maybe you can uh, make it to two to five okay so this way okay the standard nominal flow rate the term 60 over here you just replace that 60 with uh, one or two this one okay yeah now i started yeah now you started so it will be very slow now you can actually see what is happening okay Okay, now you make uh, the electrical system as well. Okay, one more thing. Uh, uh, if you double click at port number three, yeah, double click over here. As you can see the terminators over here. You can select the terminator, maybe the fourth one. Okay. Okay, press okay. Now it will be fine. Now you try to play it. It's the same thing basically. Uh, the previous one was just open, right? So now we basically what we are doing is that uh, we have uh, actually uh, inserted the vent. <clears throat> that vent is actually a terminator. Okay. So what about the other one? Uh, the other one, which one? Uh, I think you the made like electrical changes. diagram. Yeah, electrical diagram. Okay. Just stop it. Okay, stop the simulation now. Uh, yeah, on the left hand side we have all the options, right? So go down. Okay. Have a look at uh, yeah. Now you have a three by two volts over here. You have a three by two volt in the yeah mechanic. This is mechanical operator, right? Open the pneumatic okay. ones. Okay, this one. Yeah, you can take this one as well. Three by two. Which? Okay, the third one. Third one. Okay. Okay. This is a three by two ball, right? Uh, okay. Yes. Now we already have one on our screen. I forgot. You can delete it. This one. Yeah, delete, delete it. Okay. Go, uh, go down more. Uh, yeah, this one, uh, the solenoid operated valve, like this one, first one. First one, okay. Yeah, okay. We need this and uh, go down more. We need some other equipment as well. More. <clears throat> this one. Mm, little bit more. Okay, Let, no, not this one. Come down. Okay, or uh, more. Now we, we need these switches. Uh, switches. Go up a little bit. A little bit more. This one? No, not this, not this. Little bit more. Yeah, this one, this push button. Manually operated push button. Yeah, just open it. Yeah, this one. First one. First one. First one and uh, second one as well. Okay, the second one is a latching switch. The other one is the, basically the momentary switch. Okay. Okay. And you need the supply as well. So go down a little bit more. A uh, little this bit one. more. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one. You take this 24 volts and a zero volt as well. 
zero port also. Yeah. Now just try to connect them in series and. Uh, with twenty four have... with zero. No 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 no. <laughs> Not like this. Okay. Uh, you just reduce the size Sir, of the I screen. Did. Can I share my screen? The issue should share it. I think. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let him. And don't close it. You should be working on your PC. Okay. Just stop sharing the screen. Okay. 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 Uh, have a look at uh, this screen. And uh, yeah, this is fine basically. Yeah, this is fine. Uh, try to operate it. Can you see my screen? Yeah, we can see your screen. OK, good. <coughs> Okay, that is good. It is working fine. Uh, you want to regulate the speed? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. The open vent over here, the port number three, you can replace it as well with a vent with a terminator. Uh, sure. Can you yeah. uh, stop the simulation? OK, yeah. come at port number three and double click it. OK, here you can see the terminators. Uh, select third one or the fourth one. This one. OK. Yeah, that's it. So now it will not give you the error. Yeah. OK. So all right, good work. So yeah. this is fine actually. Uh, I hope that all of you can uh, work on this and uh, this is also one of the experiments for the lab as well. OK, so we don't have the hardware implementation in this one, but we have a software implementation for the hardware implementation. What we are going to do the changes. Uh, let me show you. Uh, let me share my screen with you. Someone's mic is open. Uh, ensure you your mic is open. Can you switch off your mic? Okay, thank you. Right. So what you developed over here was this figure, right? For the hardware implementation, we are going to replace <coughs> uh, this valve over here with the LED, okay, with the lamp. So the circuit will be like this. Uh, and because you will be working on the relay card, you will be having plus five volts and zero volts. Right, you have uh, two push buttons. And uh, basically what you will be doing, you will be cutting it directly with the LED. With a lamp. So we, we will be saying that this is S1, this is S3. We will be saying that when lamp is on okay uh, cylinder extends and uh, if the lamp is off cylinder Retracts. Okay. 
You can make some variations here as well, uh, like you can involve a relay over here. So if you want to involve a relay in this experiment, then it will be like this. You have a switch. You can develop a switch like this, like this one, or you can develop like this one, whatever you want to want to do. This is S1, this is S3, and uh, you open or you turn on the relay K1 with it, and then the switch K1 is connected to the lamp. Okay. This is K1 switch. This is the switch of this relay. Okay, the output switch. Okay, one more thing. Uh, when you are trying to operate the relay, <clears throat> you should have a free varying diode connected with it. Okay, that free varying diode will not be shown in the electrical diagram, but uh, if you are <clears throat> uh, running the relay directly with these switches and the supply, uh, then you do need to connect the relay with the diode. If you're using the relay card, which already has the diode with it. Okay, it's a it's actually called the free varying diode. So uh, when you do the wiring, uh, the circuit will look like this. You will have one push button here, another push button, S1 and S3. It will be connected to the coil, and this coil will be going towards the ground. Okay, this is five volts here. And uh, we have a switch here that is connected to normally close, right? And uh, this common switch needs to be connected to 5 volts, normally open with an LED, with a resistor, and to the ground. So, this is what you are going to implement as a hardware implementation of the previous experiment okay understand okay and this is easy right Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm hoping that you have uh, the hardware with you guys. So uh, maybe not today. Uh, next time in the next class. Um, during the class, you will be implementing whatever I give you. So whatever we are going to simulate on the software, we are going to implement like this. OK. Uh, and the scenarios over here will be, you know, getting harder and harder and harder. So try to concentrate on them. OK. Uh, whatever we do, try to do the practice after the class so you can remember what we did. And uh, this is also an experiment for the lab, so you need to uh, make a sheet for it. OK. So you need to include this experiment in your lab sheet. Understand? Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. So, okay, okay. Uh, let us do one more thing uh, on the software, and then I will give you one task. Uh, let me share my laptop screen with you.
I hope you can see now. Uh, in this screen, we are using the same experiment, um, but uh, and now instead of operating the solenoid directly, we are going to use a relay. OK, so for the relay, you need to find out the relay symbol here. So this is the relay symbol. So I just try to take it over here. OK, one more thing that I changed over here was this one. Uh, this is a normally close contact of the switch. OK, so let me just delete it and show you where I took it from. OK, so here you can see the push button break. Just place it over here. This is the same circuit. We have a S1 connected in series with 24 volts uh, with S3. OK, and now I'm trying to operate the solenoid using the relay. OK. So this relay is labeled as K1. Right, and uh, now I'll use the normally open switch of this K1 and connect this normally open switch K1 with this coil. OK, and I'll connect it over here. Like 24 volt. So this basically I have connected 24 volts on the common and on the normally open contact is connected to Q1. OK. Right. OK, now let us try to operate it. So once I switch it on. Nothing is happening. The reason is uh, that I haven't Tagged uh, this switch over here. This needs to be tagged over here. So now, if I switch on this relay, you can see Q1 now uh, is connected through K1 and it has switched, right? So if I press this one, it will disconnect. Okay. Understand? So basically, uh, this is a normally closed one. I have taken the wrong one over here. I'll just take it. Someone has one over here. Now, when I press S3, K1 is on, relay is on. Through the relay, I am operating the uh, valve. Okay. So when I press, uh, depress it or release it, the relay is switched off. Once the relay is switched off, this switch will also switch off and Q1 will uh, switch off as well. And uh, the cylinder will come to its rest position. OK, the task for you uh, within this diagram. Uh, can you hear me, guys? Yes, sir. OK, OK, the task for you in this diagram uh, is to. Latch this relay. OK, a latch in a way that. When I press this S1. OK, the K1 should operate. And uh, once I release the S1, the K1 should be latched. OK, it should not switch off. And how it should be switching off by pressing S3. OK, what I mean is that you need to latch this uh, relay. Understood what I'm trying to say over here? Yes. You need to basically latch this relay. And uh, how you are going to do it, you have to come up with some idea over here in order to latch this. OK. So what you have to do, if I press S1, the relay will be switched on and latched. So once I release S1, nothing will happen. OK. But uh, S3 over here, once I press S3, the K1 will be latched. So instead of uh, using this S3 as a normally open switch, we will be actually using it as a normally closed one. 
OK, this is one hint. The second hint I'm not going to give you. You have to come up with your own. You have to test the circuit and try to develop it and try to latch this and delatch it. OK, this is your task for home. So when uh, we have a class next time, uh, I'll definitely ask you if you have come up with a solution for it or not. OK. Understood? OK, yes. Okay, right? sir. OK. OK, hopefully you have understood everything for today. I think uh, uh, this would be enough. Uh, for today's class. Uh, what I want you to do with this thing is that uh, you need to develop the lab sheet for this experiment as well. So try piling up your experiments in your lab uh, as a lab sheet uh, in a soft form in Word. So uh, later on, maybe after the midterms, I will check the lab sheets uh, that uh, how many lab sheets you have already done. OK, and uh, uh, obviously I will be marking your uh, lab marks over there. OK, on that okay. lab sheet. OK. 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 All right, I think that's it for today. Uh, hope to see you next week then. Inshallah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Uh, you too. Have a good day.